Thanks, Jan Corla, and for the selection of uh, this topic. Uh, Christmas Grinch of 2017 goes to Capita PLC, uh, the parent company of AMT Cybex, which has uh, made at least six Unite members compulsorily redundant. We're now two weeks away from Christmas and they refuse to abide by the Labour Court recommendation LCR 21574, which would give those workers who have up to 20 years service five and a half weeks redundancy per year of service instead of the statutory two weeks. Um, this is a company which worldwide employs 73,000 uh, people uh, in providing, in, it's a business services provider. It's a company that has a profit in excess of £500 million pounds sterling in 2015 and 2016. And most importantly for our discussion here, it's a company which serves to almost a majority extent, 40% of its clients in Ireland are in the public sector, including the Department of Justice and Equality, the Personal Injuries Assessment Board, Fulcher Ireland and Irish uh, Rail. It developed and runs Ireland's national postcode system, Aircode, and has a contract to service Anglo-Irish bank loans on behalf of NAMA. Uh, PQs have revealed that Capita currently holds Irish state contracts across a range of departments and state enterprises worth approximately €140 million, Euros. and yet they treat the industrial relations machinery in the state with absolute uh, contempt. Uh, in, uh, they, they describe the recommendation for five and a half weeks as, quote, inappropriate and, quote, not in line with company policy, and went on to infer that the workers' decision to be collectively represented by a union of their choice, Unite, had contributed to the negative outcome of their uh, appeal. That inference that a decision of workers to collectively organise to be in a union uh, was a contributory factor in their dismissal uh, highlights again the significant deficiencies in the industrial relations legislation and the ongoing failure uh, to properly provide uh, for collective uh, bargaining. Um, I know that uh, the union has been in touch and has written to uh, the Minister for, for Finance, Mr Minister Donoghue. Uh, there was a protest which I attended today outside uh, the Department of Finance where another letter was handed in because no substantial response has yet been received to the letter of the 18th of October. Um, so I'm in here tonight um, to ask for uh, an answer to the key questions that they are asking. Uh, that fundamentally this company, um, while they can't be made do what's right by the government. They can't be imposed, as they think they, they should be able to be, to pay uh, the five and a half weeks, uh, at least, that the Labour Court uh, recommended. Um, but we should, the government should make a policy decision that rogue employers like this, that simply refuse to engage with the unions, uh, they refuse to engage with Unite all the way along, and that refuse to implement recommendations of our industrial relations machinery, um, shouldn't be facilitated by the state. And there should be a clear policy decision to have no more public contracts for companies like Capita that refuse uh, in this way to implement uh, labour court uh, decisions. Deputy Minister. Margaret, and I want to thank the Deputy for raising the matter which I'm taking on behalf of my colleague, the Minister for Business, uh, Enterprise and Innovation, Ms Heather Humphreys TD, who unfortunately can't be with us this evening. Firstly, I should point out that the Labour Court is an independent adjudicative body under the remit of the Department of Business, Enterprise and Innovation and has discharged its statutory function in this matter. The Minister has no function in relation to the implementation or otherwise of the Labour Court recommendation in this case. I understand that the Labour Court recommended an enhanced redundancy package for a group of workers in the company referred to following a referral by the Trade Union Unite to the Labour Court under Section 21 of the Industrial Relations Act 1969. And while referrals under that section of the Act require the referring party to agree to be bound by the Court's recommendation, there is no obligation on the other party to be bound by or indeed to accept the recommendation. In this case, the responding party, as is their right, did not attend the hearing of the Court, nor did the Court have the benefit of their position in framing its recommendation. In line with its statutory obligation, the Court issued a recommendation based on the information presented. I should clarify that on the issue of trade union recognition, Article 40 
of the Constitution guarantees the right of citizens to freely associate and to join unions. It has been established in a number of cases before the courts that the constitutional guarantee of freedom of association does not guarantee workers the right to have their reunion recognised for the purposes of collective bargaining. Industrial relations in Ireland is voluntary in nature, and it has been the consistent policy of successive Irish governments to promote collective bargaining through the laws of this country and through the development of an institutional framework supportive of a voluntary system of industrial relations that is premised on freedom of contract and freedom of association. To improve the situation for employees, government enacted the Industrial Relations Amendment Act 2015 to facilitate employees' rights to engage in collective bargaining. The 2015 Act provides a mechanism by which the fairness of the employment conditions of workers can be assessed where collective bargaining does not take place. It ensures that such workers, aided by a trade union, even where the trade union is not formally recognised by the employer, can advance claims about remuneration and conditions of employment and have these determined by the Labour Court based on comparator companies. Any determinations by the Labour Court in this context are enforceable before the Circuit Court. Government always encourages all sides in a trade dispute to engage constructively and in good faith with a view to all parties involved making every effort to reach agreement and to come to an arrangement that recognises the concerns of both sides. Um, to the, the letter that has been written by Unite, to the protests today, to the questions that uh, I asked. Um, See, it's very unfortunate that the Minister of Finance or the Minister of State from the Department of Finance um, isn't here to deal with these because these are queries that are directed at uh, the Minister for Finance. Um, it's a fact that Capita is the uh, recipient of extremely lucrative contracts uh, with the state. Uh, 140 uh, million uh, euros is what it, it currently uh, has. That's a lot of money, and um, that's a fact. It's also a fact that it's in a small minority of rogue employers who are prepared to disregard the state's industrial relations uh, machinery. Um, it's also a fact that 95% of all Labour Court recommendations are implemented by employers. So it's in a 5% uh, minority. Um, given all of those things, um, it is perfectly within the right of the government to say, and I think the government sh should say, that until they agree to implement this Labour Court recommendation and other recommendations, they won't be getting any more public contracts. Um, it's perfectly appropriate and right to say that there's a, you know, a, a public obligation on those who receive public contracts, that they shouldn't be able to treat their workers in the extremely cruel, Grinch-like fashion that they have uh, been doing so, and then to disregard uh, the mechanisms uh, set up in terms of the, the workers pursuing all of those mechanisms. In terms of the references, which are more general, to collective bargaining and so on, I mean, Capita refused to engage with Unite. They refused to attend the Workplace Relations Commission. They refused to attend the Labour Court, and now they're refusing to implement a Labour Court recommendation. And it precisely illustrates the point about the so-called voluntarist model of uh, industrial relations uh, in this country. The right for workers to freely organise, to be involved uh, in unions, to collectively bargain, means that where unions, where workers, the majority of workers in a certain workplace join a union, well then the employer should deal with that uh, union as opposed to continuing to ignore it and the industrial relations machinery. Thank you. Minister, to conclude. Um, we all acknowledge that a redundancy situation in any workplace is always difficult for the workers and indeed for their families. Uh, but we are fortunate in Ireland we have a, an industrial relations system in place uh, where the fundamental approach of successive governments has been uh, one of volunteerism. In general, our laws do not try to impose a solution on parties to a trade dispute, but rather are designed to help support the parties in resolving their differences. So the state, by and large, has confined its, ro its role to underpinning volunteerism through the provision of a framework and institutions through which good industrial relations can prosper. And finally, the recommendation in this case was made under Section 20 uh, of the Industrial Relations Act and as such, and under Irish law, is only binding on the referring party, i.e. the union. And again, it's important to point out that the company is not breaking any law by not recognising the Labour Court recommendation for more favourable redundancy terms. Thank you, Minister. Item 3.